Hi, I'm Vin Ferrara. I'm the founder and CEO of Zenith. Zenith was created with the goal of advancing safety and activity through innovation and education. We want to create the best products and give you the best information so you and the people you care about can be well informed and well equipped. Our first goal is to reduce the risk of concussions in football. And we believe this goal starts with education. This video shows the anatomy of a typical football concussion. Two players colliding head to head is an all too common occurrence. And when the head is impacted, it moves suddenly, causing the brain to move inside the skull. This sudden movement of the head and brain disrupts the brain's normal function, resulting in the signs and symptoms of concussion. It's important to note the difference between signs and symptoms. A sign is something that is visible to others, such as loss of consciousness, loss of balance, obvious confusion, or vomiting. In the past, these visible signs were used to diagnose concussions. However, we have come to understand that players are often suffering the symptoms of concussion, even without showing any visible signs. Symptoms are only recognized when players report them. Competitive athletes have a long history of not reporting their symptoms, either because they don't understand them or because they want to stay on the field. Therefore, we know now that only a fraction of concussions are recognized. And terms like getting dinged, getting your bell rung, and getting shaken up are really describing concussions. We know that concussions carry the potential for both short and long-term effects, and each concussion results in increased risk of suffering another concussion. We also know that concussions can only be diagnosed by a complete clinical assessment. Now that you have the proper information, we'd like to introduce you to our innovation, what we call Zenith Adaptive Head Protection. Zenith Adaptive Head Protection features two patent pending technologies combined in a system and is designed to reduce the risk and severity of brain injury by reducing the sudden movement of the head during impact. Let's look at how it works. First, it's helpful to understand how helmets are tested. Helmets are tested by impacting crash test dummies at a variety of energy levels and in a variety of locations. By raising the dummy up and dropping it in a free fall, the testing equipment provides a measure of how suddenly the head comes to rest during the impact, providing an indication of the severity of the impact. A more sudden change in velocity means higher acceleration and higher force and more damage to the brain. Zenith Adaptive Head Protection uses a wear flow shock absorbers rather than foam or padding. These shock absorbers dissipate energy by collapsing to vent air. This video demonstrates the function of a wear flow shock absorbers in comparison to traditional foam padding. You're looking at a video of a widely used helmet being tested in comparison to a Zenith helmet on an impact to the forehead using helmets without face masks. Because the aware flow shock absorbers are hollow and function by venting a cushion of air, they provide for a more complete and more gradual collapsing than dense foams and other padding materials. This video shows how dense foam only collapses partially before packing into a completely dense solid, therefore creating a much more sudden change in velocity than the shock absorbers, which are capable of a more complete compression. A more complete compression means more time to dissipate energy and less sudden movement. This performance is also measured graphically. These curves are produced by the accelerometers inside the head form, which measure the acceleration of the head form in G's, the unit of gravity. Higher G's indicate higher acceleration or more sudden change and are more dangerous. Zenith Adaptive Head Protection reduces the peak G experienced by the head, represented by force curves that are wider and less peaked. Venting air allows the shock absorbers to adapt their performance to the level of impact providing an optimized response at a variety of energy levels. By forcing air to flow through a small opening, the adaptive response is created. Under lower energy, the air turbulence is lower and the air flows out more easily. At higher energies, the air turbulence is increased and the shock absorber behaves more stiffly. If you've ever used a bicycle pump to blow up a tire, you've noticed that the harder you push on the pump, the more resistance you generate. This is similar to the way a wear flow shock absorbers work. Why is an adaptive system best? If the system is too soft, it will collapse instantly. If it's too hard, it will not collapse enough. In either case, the head experiences sudden movement and the brain can be injured. Since we cannot always predict the energy level of impact, we need something that will adapt to provide the proper response, 
so that the movement of the head is less sudden no matter what type of impact. In addition, the shock absorbers return to shape instantaneously in order to manage the next hit, and they show outstanding durability over repeated impacts. They function over a wide temperature range and are highly resistant to fluids. They're also highly customizable for different age groups or different locations on the head. In addition to adaptive shock absorbers, we also created an adaptive fit system known as Fit Seeker. As you can see from the inside of the helmet, when the player pulls on the straps, the helmet literally snugs inward. Gives you an instant custom fit with no pumps needed. Player simply needs to pull horizontally on the chin straps, which pulls the chin cup up into the chin and snugs the helmet down around the player's head. In order to fit the helmet, player brings the strap under the jawline and up back towards the snap. A helmet that fits better protects better. In addition to being more protective and better fitting, the X1 football helmet is lightweight, comfortable, and well ventilated. The shock absorbers allow for plenty of room for air to circulate within the helmet, and the location of the vents in the upper rear portion of the helmet allow air to rise up off the neck and also allow air to flow from front to back for a very noticeable cooling effect. We said that it starts with education and it also ends with education. We believe the biggest problem in football is head first contact. This is actually a picture of me in high school trying to run over my opponent with my head first. And my opponent is using his head first to try to tackle me. Both of us were at high risk for not only concussion but spinal cord injury as well. Our techniques are in clear violation of football rules and very dangerous, but no penalty was called. This problem needs to be addressed, and we are calling for coaches, officials, medical staff, administrators, media, players, and parents to put a stop to this. Wearing a better helmet and playing the game more safely is a complete strategy for prevention of concussions. And if you get hit and don't feel right, go ahead and tell someone so you can get the proper treatment. Be well informed and well equipped. Thanks.